welcome to episode two of my Copart Porsche Cayman GT4 rebuild. The last time we started it for the first time, then we took it for its first test drive. Everything went great. That meant there was only one thing left to do, order a ton of parts. And if you can't tell by what's going on behind me, we did just that. Really, the only problem we have now is, where do we start? What about open the boxes? One of the first things we got here, brand new taillights. These were actually more cost effective than buying used. Brand new for Porsche for less money, can't beat it. Believe it or not, we did not save a ton of money buying this hood itself used. The reason we did it is because we saved money on everything that's attached to the hood. The striker, the bump stop, the hinges, the strut, everything. On your average rebuild, headlights, a grand, two grand, not that bad. However, when I priced these new with the modules, that one right there, that one right there, these headlights were almost $6,500. 6500 Zero, zero. You heard that right. It took way too long and a lot of phone calls to be able to buy those things. We ended up getting these guys with this factory exhaust, which also proved very hard to find. This duckbill spoiler, which funny enough, when I tried to order this from Porsche, they told me, can't sell it to you. There's none available, back ordered, no ETA, nothing. Good luck finding it. Over the axle pipes, which are bent on this car, this rear bumper beam heat shields, the whole deal for like two grand less than we would have been able to buy those headlights for new. That was a huge win and it really helped us out. Now, one thing you might not expect to be expensive, the centerpiece of the rear diffuser. This is like $600 new. A part that hit us for a quick grand, those bumper beams. We couldn't find them used. We had to order these new from Porsche. They were like 450, 500 each. Now these two parts here were incredibly, incredibly complicated to get. Very simple and unassuming. However, these are some of the parts that Porsche will only sell to Porsche certified body shops. We had to cheat the system a little bit. And we had to order these straight from Lithuania. Look at that primed, ready to go. Now, if you're wondering why it is missing that whole lower section, well, that is because on the GT4, that's an individual piece. And fortunately for us, that is one of the few pieces that actually survived on this. There we go. Perfect. I'm thinking the plan for this video is to address this entire rear end. This whole rear section is bashed in. We're gonna have to straighten this entire rear firewall. If you see this bottom section's bent down a little bit, that's pushed in, but that is very thin metal there. So I'm thinking I have a way to do that. We're gonna find out in just a second if I bit off more than I can chew. Now, if you look down inside the trunk, you see some of those spot welds are actually broken. And while we can't replace spot welds here, I bought this incredibly awesome Milwaukee blind rivet tool. We're also gonna have to get back underneath of it, see what else is damaged under there, see if we need to fix that little skid plate. We're gonna replace the entire exhaust. Basically what I'm saying here is we have a ton of work to do. For as much of this car that is gonna take a ton of work, a ton of labor and a ton of effort on our end, one thing that's not, this spoiler right here. We're gonna send this up to our buddies at Industry Garage. It's gonna come back quick, fast, and in a hurry, ready to bolt right back on this car. Now that this bolt here is out, this one is not attached on the backside. It's simply spinning. We have to figure that out real quick, but you can see the full scope of the damage here. It's pretty gnarly. Uh, here we go. Just hold that wing because that thing is going to come flying off there. Uh, we got it loose. It's not spinning anymore. And oh, it's Loctite. I don't know if you can see that, but that explains it. It looks like this rib nut or whatever you want to call it was set into the foam and when it ripped out, it lost all grip. It is still set where it should be, so hopefully that means it's actually not going to be too bad of a fix for Tim. We might actually just end up putting a little carbon patch around the outside here. This one we're going to do the same thing, but we might not fully crack the fastener out of the foam because, like you said, this one was actually staying in. It'll be a lot of filling and using like a carbon paste for most of it. Sounds like you have this covered. Uh, I'm gonna get out of here and let you do your thing. And we will be back very shortly to, I guess, pick this thing up and get it back on the car. Maybe trade some Porsches, who knows? Yeah, I, th I think that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> if you're seeing all this cool stuff around me, behind me, and pretty much everywhere in here, uh, I am not gonna show you any of that today, but I will be back here very shortly with another Porsche and then I'll give you the full tour. He knocked this thing out so fast and was also willing to meet me after hours while I was up in the area. So uh, we really wasted no time. And I suppose this is the first bit of progress on this car. I mean, she's really not going anywhere. Before we started yanking on this rear firewall, I wanted to take a second and bolt on the rear bumper beam. I wanted to make sure everything was square. Fortunately, everything lined up as it should. Same deal with the front. Everything is square up here, though I didn't bolt it down. The plan now is to stick this stainless eye bolt through this 2x4. That way it spreads a nice even load over this entire rear firewall. And then we'll get to pulling on it with our frame machine. And by frame machine, I do mean our forklift. Thanks for asking. <laughs> 
So that's what we're working with. Do I feel great about it? No. Do I feel good about it? Yeah, why not? If it puts up more of a fight than I think it's gonna, we're gonna have to reinforce the entire back piece of this wood with metal. The last thing we need is for this to rip out of there. My theory here is that people are gonna see all these chains even though we don't need them and think we actually know what we're doing. All right, nice and slow. Is that lined up how you want it, the wood? Lined up enough. Oh. All right, it did, that actually worked good. That actually, we're off to a good start here. Ready? Yep, hit it. A little more, all right. As sketchy as this looked in the beginning, we're on the right track here, for sure. Obviously, this wouldn't be possible without precision forklift driving that only I possess in this shop. Maybe Fernando, too. Definitely not Lee, though. You know I'm editing this video, right? It's in there. We're going to be good, good shape. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Next order of business is to get this seam out. Hopefully if I push up on it, it'll flatten it and it'll come somewhat. Then we're gonna have to figure out what we can do to push from the inside. Oh, look Always at that. Moving. It's, it's moving. doing exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is not the view that I want when I look up. Yeah, we're professional <laughs> here. So we're actually making much better progress on this than I thought we would be. Now it's just a bunch of tedious little stuff. certainty that I had going into this whole rear end pulling type thing it was pretty much unfounded one of the worst spots that spot right here that was down and in pretty good corrected itself pretty damn easily once I had this big piece of wood centered there through the middle with our eye bolt in it I basically used smaller pieces to adjust where we were putting our force worst case scenario would have been that we would have had to drill a hole either that or weld something on to be able to pull this out Fortunately, we got it really, really close just doing it the way we did. We pulled that guy out there, put more wood up there. That allowed us to pull this section out here. This stud straightened right up. All these studs, in fact, got super, super straight. I did bust out the seam sealer because we marred up a little bit of that factory stuff right there. This area here took some massaging. We had to go up. We had to go in. We had to come back out. So I did mar it up a little bit down there. I wanted to take care of that. Now, this all sounds fine and dandy, right? Well, none of this is gonna matter if we go to put that trunk latch on, shut the hatch, and it doesn't line up. If I go to mount this bumper and it doesn't fit. If I go to put the taillights in and they're giving me a little trouble. There's a very clear outline here where this latch used to be. So we're gonna start with that and see what it does. It's a fairly unique latch, at least from the American and Japanese stuff I'm used to working on. These parts of this latch here are gonna hit that part of the striker right there, push down, and hopefully if this is aligned correctly, it's gonna grab and latch. We got this thing flawless. I mean flawless. Side to side, absolute perfection. Even more importantly, up and down perfection. It might be a little hard to make out now, but I think once we get that bumper on, it'll show you just how perfect this is. There's no play in our bump stops there. Everything is exactly how you want it. So we did not make it very far. If you've watched any rebuilds on this channel before, you know one of our distinct advantages is we typically have everything we need. You find something that's missing or unexpectedly damaged, go pull it off the shelf, no big deal. Works great with Corvettes, does not work that good with GT4s. We have not parted out one of these before, though I'm sure we will here at some point. Now because of that, I'm running into a ton of the typical issues that you guys would if you were doing this at home. I tried to test fit the taillights. We're missing a plastic bracket that goes right around there, so we have to order those. I said, hey, since I can't do that, let me go ahead and just throw this exhaust on. Well, it turns out these four bolts here on the back of the transmission, yeah, they hold a very big exhaust bracket. Now also on the slightly bad news front, while I was under there trying to figure out how to mount that exhaust, 
I saw something else broken. All of our lifts are occupied by complete junk at the moment, so we're gonna have to use an alternative method. Now, I don't know how we missed this last time, but I just caught it when I was looking at that exhaust stuff. This control arm here, definitely bent. The rest of the suspension looks pretty good. I just started looking for a part number on this control arm so I can order a replacement, and I noticed that inner joint. It's spherical. Either Porsche did some really cool stuff on these or these are aftermarket arms. I just went and got all of our parts orders in. So we're gonna pull this thing in for the night. Hopefully those parts are gonna get here very soon. But either way, we're gonna get back in here tomorrow and knock out the little bit of interior work we have to do. We're back, it's a brand new day. We spent all last night pretty much ordering parts for this thing. A bunch of seemingly minor stuff added up to like two grand. We didn't have a choice, had to get it on the way. If you watched the first episode, you already know this passenger seatbelt is junk. It was locked up during the wreck, then somebody went ahead and cut it. So obviously we have to replace it. We have a nice used replacement here. So we're gonna go ahead and stick that in. And although it seems like kind of a minor job, it's gonna be very easy. At that point, this entire interior is done. can't tell we made it to the Porsche dealer and we have a lot of parts I mean a lot I've been to quite a few Porsche dealers over the past couple months not a lot of people have multiple GT4s and a line of 992 turbos sitting around we are back in the shop on this beautiful Saturday morning we're pulling cars out right now we're actually gonna get the GT4 over on the lift this morning because there's not 10 guys over there making a ton of noise a ton of machinery we actually have a nice quiet shout to film in for once you know this is a Porsche video right they're disgusted by this. this. Is a beast. Now, if today goes as planned, this is the last time we're ever gonna hear this Porsche with open header. Hold on, you're how old, Fernando? 26? Uh, 25. And you can barely get out of those seats? Come on. I'm 200 hey, hey. pounds. You're like 120. Of course you're going to be waiting. Dramatic. On your right, you can see my ZR1 parking lot ornament massacred by birds. Coming up on the left, Fernando's Tacoma that does not do burnouts well at all. I think we better put it away for the day. <laughs> Followed by an Evo that I have never seen at the shop before and a Z28 with the world's worst color wheels. I hope you've enjoyed your tour today. Please tip the operator if you feel so inclined. Some of this stuff was a month out from Porsche. It had to come from Germany. Uh, it was gonna kind of screw us. Fortunately, we hit eBay and they had every single other part we needed. I was able to find one item, click buy, it came with all five pieces I needed and it saved me from ordering five different parts from Porsche. Okay, there we go. Boom. Eight matching nuts. There's no better feeling than we just have a great set of nuts. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Sounds weird. Grow up. <laughs> you know what I miss doing? Mm -hmm. Working on Corvettes. I thought that you are a Porsche fan right now. Well, I'm a Porsche fan. This is just a lot more involved. This is, I genuinely think I could build a C6 Corvette in my sleep. The one saving grace here though is everything's fitting together really good. If I'm not the most OCD person on earth when it comes to hardware matching, I'm close. That's a black one, not the right black one. We have our first tail light in and fortunately it fits perfect. This does have an alignment pin on the back that has never been removed from the car. So that along with the lines between the quarter and the tail light give us a really good place to start adjusting from. Now it's as simple as just building off of that.
guys, we are making pretty good progress. We are pretty much ready to stick this bumper on there. But first, I'm gonna do the exhaust swap. While it's not technically necessary to pull the bumper, pull anything else to do this exhaust swap, we still have to stick that massive assembly on the side there, and that's gonna cut off access to that five volt flange right there. So we're gonna do things the smart way and go ahead and swap this exhaust. Then we're gonna hang the bumper, stick the taillights back in, and take it for a test drive. Fernando, I am severely disappointed. Why? Feel this. Wait, what? Titanium? I didn't they're titanium, yes. Wow. It is an absolute shame to have to take off these beauties and put on these heavy stock catted ones. This is pretty much the exact opposite route that anybody would want to go on their GT4. However, we do need to get this thing back to stock. We need to get it inspected. If there's one silver lining here, it's that we get to experience a nearly stock GT4. And I do say nearly because I found a couple mods. You heard me talking about these tow links earlier in the episode. Well, it turns out they are aftermarket. The stock ones are not cheap. If I were to order them from Porsche, they were about $400 each. I couldn't find any OEM ones used. However, I was able to find another set of aftermarket ones used. So we went ahead and ordered those. When I pulled the wheel off to go ahead and swap these exhaust pieces around, I did notice that it also has aftermarket stainless brake lines. The saddest part of my day right here, but it's about that time, so maybe it won't fit and we'll just have to leave it open. Probably it was like a really nice aftermarket shot. Maybe, yeah, have no idea. We never got to see it. Our exhaust install is done. I can't resist immediately starting it up and hearing it. I figure what better to do than get everything nice and hot back there for the remainder of the bumper job. So these things do have like a cold start procedure where they're really loud for a certain amount of time. It may not be as quiet as you're thinking for this first little bit. That is the cold start like louder part I think. That is not loud at all. This actually sounds like a Porsche now. It's just rattly and quiet. Now it's quiet. Now it's really quiet. I'm a 997 guy, as most of you know. I forgot these fancy new cars have a button for the exhaust. Ooh. Uh, ha, ha. Okay, quiet. Quiet. Now hit the button. Oh, there we go. Bad. That's what I was about to yeah, say. It's, it's really not, not that bad. I'll yeah. take it. I'll take it. All right, shut her down. It does make sense that being a GT car, Porsche didn't go crazy quiet with the exhaust. It actually still sounds pretty good. Plug it in first. Rookie. You got nowhere. There we go. Get rid of the blanket, that way it's not an option to take the bumper back okay. off. It has to be right. Okay. Do you actually trust yourself? We got it. <laughs> He's detailing a primered bumper that I'm not even done installing. I'm just gonna f it up again. This is the duck wheel that you could not order from Porsche. Got very, very lucky that I found this thing on eBay. Apparently the reason this is such a special spoiler is that every other 718 came in has an active spoiler. On the GT4, you have that big spoiler up there, so you don't need some dumb active spoiler. You have a permanent massive one. So they got rid of it, they put a fixed spoiler on here, and here we are. Tail light time, then we get to close the hatch, and then we're done. Now hopefully the tail lights still all fit like they should. I guess it helped if I plugged it in, wouldn't it? 
been a very long day. I will add a very long but very productive day. She looked good. I'm sure some of you out there can relate. When you're cleaning out the car for the last time, you're about to shut the hatch and get on your way. Is there a better feeling? We are still not quite fully done yet though. We gotta attach the bottom of this bumper. We are not putting the under panels on tonight. We have suspension work to do. So there's no point really doing that. Just have to take it back off when we do this control arm. How is the car still driving there? Uh, I mean, a, a, bit, a big control arm's just gonna throw a lineman out. It's not the worst thing in the world. Well guys, if you look outside, we got this much sun left, so we didn't quite make it. We have one part left to hang. There we go. <laughs> that was a little tricky to get in there good, but we got it. I can't imagine a better day working on this car. Pretty much nothing went wrong, and that is rare, as a lot of you guys probably know. We should call the victor at this point, or we just victory, hundred percent victory okay. today. Yeah, I mean nothing's gonna screw up here, so don't that's, say that's, that. Just don't that say was, that. That was a bad idea. To yeah, don't that. say that. Snap! <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could drive the GT4 home. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> maybe, soon. Pretty maybe, soon. maybe I'll strap a couple of those little mechanics lights to the front bumper and just drive Ooh. it home. I'm genuinely curious to hear how many of you guys are like this. Is a functional bolt a functional bolt? I don't think so. Or do you need to have matching bolts on everything for your project? Boom. Last bullet of the day. I will see you guys in roughly 24 hours to wrap this all up, to go take it for a test drive, to have a little fun. And by 24 hours, I mean 24 hours for me. It's gonna be about three seconds from now in the video. That's done, that's it. <laughs> Quickest 24 hours on YouTube, am I right? We're back in here on this beautiful, not so beautiful Monday morning. I decided I would get here really early today and the first person that showed up to work will get to drive the car. Today's lucky winner, this guy right here. It is unfortunately a little wet this morning so that kind of puts a damper on things but it is going to beep the entire time because well there's no hood so. No. If there's a person here that will appreciate this, it's him. I think if you could design a car from scratch it would be something like this, right? Probably, yeah. Once again, I definitely said this on Saturday. This has been a very fulfilling video. Sometimes you set out on a project and nothing goes as planned. This one, it just worked out perfect. Yeah, you can feel that control arm. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get that control arm worked out, yeah. but other than that. Damn. This thing's sick. Hey, make sure I came in. <laughs> yes. Yes, you should. I have the perfect one for you. Uh, this puppy right here, one owner never wrecked. Yeah. All right, final opinions. You got five seconds to sum it up. It's incredible and there's nothing wrong with it other than a bent control arm. <laughs> perfect. It's, Enough said, that's gonna do it. Eric, send us away. Roll the outtakes. The problem we have here. Why is, why is it like twitching? I don't know what's up with that. I suppose that makes sense or man. Let's do it one more time. Jesus Christ, dude. This is not my night. Tomorrow I'm coming in better. Check it out. You can actually hear that. What do we want to name the yeah, safety? Yeah, I was going to say, we got to come up with a name yeah. for them. Yeah. It's I'm, like a safety brigade, brigade uh, or something. I'm sure like. the comment section safety brigade is going to... Brigade? <laughs> brigade? No. Brigade? Brigade. I'm sure the comment section safety brigade is... <laughs> YouTube comment safety brigade... Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I can't say it either. What the I'm, I'm, I'm sure the comment, I'm, I'm sure the comment section safety brigade, brigade. brigade. No, we, we brigade. gotta get it right. We just gotta not brigade. be stupid. Brigade. <laughs> safety brigade. I'm, I'm sure the comment section safety brigade. What are you <laughs> trying to say? Brigade. It's brigade, okay. but I, and we keep saying brigade. <laughs> brigade. Are brigade. you hungry? Why? It's brigade. Get that joke. I thought you I were trying get... to say burger. <laughs> that, that, like that, that, that was no. not a good okay, joke. Okay. In the comment section safety brigade is going to have something to say about this we got it it's all right there we go nailed it that was smooth i'm sweating my ass off <laughs> this whole day i'm i'm in two gallons i'm halfway done my second gallon of water for today this has been a very i've already told him it's been a long day i don't need to say that again does it look halfway decent with the light like that yeah but just the skin color looks like too orange and it allows the screw to it's a real, it's a really unique clip, but it, it, <laughs> <laughs> bitch. <laughs> oh, damn it.
Fernando. What? We need to go searching for nuts again. Hey, you know we came over here to work in quiet on a Saturday, and you're here working on this piece of shit, Miata. Yeah. <laughs> that was so fucking obviously fake. When we tried to order this from GM, Only the finest here at Scrap Life Garage. And by finest, I do mean finest of what Harbor Freight has to offer.